Sean. It's Monty Moore. I am a 30 year comics veteran in comics, games, and movies. And you've been watching one of my absolute favorite podcasts, Catch the Craze. So thank you guys for all you do. Uh, everybody, you stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time. What's up, crazies? Kickstarter fans, indie comic fans, I got something for you. I have indie creators in the blue room. They're ready to talk to you about their Kickstarters. They either launched it or gonna launch. So if you really, really love indie comics and you want to support the little guy and see them win, well, here's an opportunity to prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. Check this out. I'm done talking. Now it's time for the indies. Let's start it up. Start it up, y'all. Start it up, y'all. Start it up, start it up, start it up, y'all. What's up, George? Who do we have on the show today? Uh, today on the show, we have Monte Michael Moore, creator of Blood and Bullets, and his Kickstarter is on live right now. I'm allergic to bullets, and I don't like blood. Let's get it! Cast the Craze is partnered with NSC Road Show. NSCLiveTV.com and Inc. Marketing are proud to present the NSC Roadshow Podcast Tour. As a creator, come to be treated like a rock star as we take you on a tour with podcasters from around the world. Got a Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or a project you would like to tell thousands about? Come and get on the tour. Are you a podcaster that would like more creators on your show? Come become a tour stop on the tour. So, what's up, George? Yeah. What's happening? What's happening? What's up? Another day, another dollar. Another day, another dollar. Another day, another dollar, another show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Catch the Craze. It is, uh, what is it, the 22nd of April, and uh, we have another Kickstarter on the show, Kickstarter Buddy. He's actually killing it, man. He's killing it. He's got, what, what, where are we at now? Where are we at? At, As of the recording of this show, 29,000. 29 Gs. Make it rain. Geez. Make it going. rain. And and he's got he's got sixteen days to go. So there's plenty, plenty more. Where oh, that came from. a minute ago it said seventeen. So it must be midday. Uh, yeah, probably. Probably launched it. Yeah. It, well, yeah. So uh, eight o'clock. At eight o'clock on May seventh, it ends. Yeah. There you go. See. I see. So, I knew it. I knew I saw seventeen a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. No, it was when I yeah. refreshed it. It's the same thing. But um, yeah, three hundred eighty-seven backers. So if you guys are looking for a really cool uh, Western book. And it's got like vampires. It's like a mix of things. Um, Check it out. Definitely go to Kickstarter, hit the link below and check that out. But while you're at it, also check that link below and uh, go check out our Kickstarter that's launching on the 29th. Yes. Seven days. Yes. Seven days. The crazies are back. The crazies the crazy are three. back. And, uh, and they come back. You know, it's uh, I'm excited about the crazies. Sign up today. The goal is to get to 100 backers. You know, um, you know, the, we had 64 backers, the last one. Um, so we want to be able to each campaign, the, the it increased. So we want to get to 100 backers, this one. And uh, we're going to have an announcement on the 29th about uh, an incentive if we get to 100 backers. So you want to watch, be on that live show. And we'll be on Twitch and YouTube and Periscope and Facebook. Uh, so you want to join us to find out what that incentive is if we make that um, strut step 100 backer goal. And we have an announcement on a partnership. So a lot's to come. So you want to check that out. That's right. That's right. We are we're getting busy with these uh, Kickstarter shows. We're also getting busy on putting things together for our Kickstarter and uh, Forbidden. Forbidden is coming. Forbidden, the uh, Prince. Uh, I believe we should be uh, so getting ready to deliver some. Yes. Stuff so um, I reached out to. So I have everything except for the books. So I have the sketchbooks. I have the. Um, Bookmark and the pinups and the shirts um, were already sent to the people who got the shirts at the, the, the early. The actual books reached out to the printer because there's been a delay uh, in response. So um, sent me proofs today. Um, I sent some revisions because I didn't like the way it looked on the proofs. And um, hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to sign off on the proofs, have it printed, I have it in my hands next week. If that's the case, I can get it out to you guys by the end of next week. So the goal is to get it out before the end of the month. So I'm hoping to get it out before the, the live show and be able to announce it on the live show and have it everything shipped out to you guys. So 
That's what we are with forbidden. What what was wrong with the proofs? Um, so when he asked me, so when I sent the, so I sent him the version that I sent to Mixum and Mixum didn't have any issues with it. And so he wanted, he sent me a template to add the bleeds at a larger size than the 6.625 by 10.20. So now it was 6.85 by 10.5. So I did that. Then when I got him back, the borders were too big and I thought that the bleed was because it's going to trim it down to 6.625 by 10.25. And so I didn't like what I was seeing. So I did extend everything to the bleed um, to make sure and then make sure where where the perforation, where it gets cut, everything matches up nicely. I just wanted it. Yeah. I just didn't want it to look like um, I printed it myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I set that out. And um, so uh, hopefully uh, because I reached out to them on Facebook because my emails weren't being answered. <laughs> and so I was like, hey, I found you. And um, so uh, right now we're in motion. So hopefully by tomorrow I can sign off on everything and we're good to go. And I'll have those ready for you guys. Sweet. Yeah, so it's coming. Forbidden is coming. And and the pages are coming in fast and furious. Yeah. Uh, the Our... The, the colorist, what's her name? It's Barbara something, right? I can't remember her name. I want Barbara. to give her a shout out. Uh, but she's she's definitely, uh, you know, producing these pages at, at, a, at a high rate. I mean, we're, we're getting emails all the time. You know, next page done, next page done. It's so, a, a page a day, basically, that um, yeah. she's been coloring, killing yeah. it. Um, um, until, as we're talking, I'm looking to see how we spice uh, up the name. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I mean... So while she uh, while she does that, I'm actually dropping the already lettered pages onto the colored pages, and just making a couple of adjustments. Then, you know, sending them out. But the first twenty pages, which is what everybody's going to be getting, is is what's coming from the printers. What we're talking about the printers, the stuff that she's that she's sending on top of that is just stuff after those twenty pages. Yeah. So it's beyond the twenty pages. She's gone. I think she at this point she's probably into like, if if we were doing it numerically she's well into like the 30s or something like that like if you were printing it out in one shot you yeah know i mean the page she's like up to like page 30 or something so if you have yes. the first 20 pages she's well into yeah. actually no maybe page 34 because i think you sent me like the 14th page today or something like that yeah so yeah so she's moving she's, she's moving quickly she's she's definitely yeah. moving. and yeah. um easy to work with and fast so when i when i see a, uh, something that doesn't you know like like a color i'm like can you change this boom within an hour it's done um yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's moving pretty fast. Um, Soragi is her last name. Soragi. So, big yeah. shout out to Barbara Soragi. She, uh, she's in Brazil, right? Yes. Salute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, are you, what, what are you drinking there, bro? It looks like uh, Tea. urine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it'll put you in the box. Um, that's tea, homie. That's tea. Because for my belly. Yo, dude, I got a belly. This, this thing working from home, bro, you know, this brokepreneur thing is. Yeah. Um, and then all the stuff that I've been dealing with has been putting some uh, uh, a tire iron around my my gut. I, oh, I, I, I gotta word. I gotta start hustling. Well, sitting down, you gotta start. You know yes. what you gotta get? You probably gotta get like a stand up desk. I feel like when you're yes. sitting down, well, yeah, I can't afford it. I can't it's afford coming. it. Like, no, I mean, make make it, build it. Yeah, come on, you build. Look at look at your house. You build most of the stuff in that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Operate. Stack some boxes up. I'm gonna stack, <laughs> stack you. Up. <laughs> Where's George? He's, you, he's in the box. You don't have to. You don't have to build it. Build it. No, but I'm saying you probably need to just work while you're standing up or something. You know, that, when you just said that you don't have to build it, build it. I was watching this video <laughs> when this, his, this guy's wife was like, you know, when I tell you to do something, do it. He goes, well, I didn't know you wanted me to do it, do it. She goes, what do you mean do it, do it? He goes, <laughs> and he's like, he goes, you know, he kept saying, repeating every the words. And she's like, you sound like a freaking idiot. And they argue, it was the most funniest thing. He's like, he goes, you know, I didn't know. Why are you going to be so mad, mad? <laughs> Mad, mad. <laughs> yeah, are you mad, mad yeah. now? Oh, yeah, she was shoot. flipping out. I mean, she was violent, like poltergeist violent. It was crazy. Oh, uh, that's hysterical. Yes, yes. But, uh, yeah, it's been nuts. It's been nuts up in here. It's been nuts. So, yeah, yeah. yeah you got some stuff going on over there. A lot of sh crap. A lot, a lot. But let's give people a, a quick uh, just recap on what's happening this month. So this month at the end. April 29th, right? We're gonna do we're gonna do the uh, the live show. The live show. We have we have a, and, and if you haven't been on the show, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we have a lot of Kickstarter uh, folks 
on our show this month in April. Mm -hmm. In April, we've had so many Kickstarters. We've had Jerry Winsboro, who was just on the show recently. Yes. We have, um, we have the, you know, we have a week going on tonight. What, what else? We've had um, we Amerikaiju. 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 We have another uh, one next the, week. Um, if we become yeah. a haven for campaigns, which is <laughs> which is which is great. So here's my thing to all of you guys that are out there wanting to do a campaign or getting ready to launch a campaign. Um, hit us up early, you know, and yeah. you know, hit us up early so we can schedule you and give you the appropriate time to promote your stuff. Some, what we find is some of, some of the cats are like, Oh my gosh, you know, I'm 15 days in and you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm nowhere near my goal. You know, Hey, can you get me on this week? You know, and while we've made some accommodations, we, we have guests that don't have campaigns and we have guests that run the gamut, you know, from acting, you know, to music, whatever. So um, it's difficult to be able to try to make it happen. So hit us up in advance and we'll be more than happy to get you on here and uh, give you the spotlight and let you promote um, your campaign. Yeah, definitely come on. I mean, listen, any, any little bit helps, right? So if you're trying to build a fan base or if you're trying to get to a certain number, as far as, uh, you know, Kickstarter followers or subscribers or pledgers or whatever you want to call them, this is definitely a, a good way to do it because the more exposure, the better. So, don't, don't look at us as, as a small show. Look at us as an opportunity for, for you to get the word out. Because at the end of the day, we're going to promote our show. <laughs> so we're going to try to get it out there as much as possible. And it's also up to you to promote the show as well. So don't yes. forget that just because you come on the show and we're going to promote it, you promoting it also helps your numbers, our numbers, it helps everybody. So just word. because you're on the show, don't just sit on those laurels. Make sure you get out there, you do the job, say, hey, I'm going to be on this show on this day. We'll, we'll tell you when the show airs so you know when it's coming out. So make yeah. sure you let, you let people know, hey, I'm going to be on this show on this date. Check it out. Yeah, because we are we, you know, promotional beasts. And if there's a social media platform out there, we're on it. Um, whether it's TikTok, Snapchat, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, we promote on all those 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 uh, those outlets. Um, That's right. uh, but then it's up to you to also share with your community as well. So we'll do our part, and uh, we go above and beyond. We promote every guest on every social media platform. Um, but make sure you tell your people, um, "Hey, look, I'm on this show, whatever it is," um, because you want to spread the word just as much. That's correct. That is correct. Help us help you. Help so, us yeah, no. help you. What else we got going on? Okay, so that's that's that. The crazies come out on the 29th. We're going to be, that's going to run for a month. And at the end of next month, May 29th, we're going to be at the PowCon. Pow! So, PowCon in yes. uh, New Jersey, Wayne, New Jersey. PowCon in Wayne, New Jersey. So, yeah, so make sure that you head out there because we're going to be doing a, a little something different this year that we've never done at a convention. I don't think we've, no, we've never done this at a convention. We're actually hosting a panel. Yes. At the convention. We will be hosting a panel uh PowCon and yes. a big shout out to Sal Lamedico who is the promoter of, of the um, of the panel. We've had him on the show so check that out. That's in the archives. When you subscribe check out the, the interview we did with him. And we will be there May 29th. So definitely wanna wanna get your tickets. Go to um, what's the website, Sam? I don't know. Don't it is powevents.com. Powevents.com. And yes, we will be hosting, you know, our first panel since we've cut back into the game. Um, so it's going to be dope. It's going to be extra. You don't want to miss it. And, you know, there's going to be raffles. We're going to stream live if they have Wi-Fi. <laughs> so we're going to stream live and that's going to be fun. So if they have Wi-Fi, I, I forgot to ask them, make sure they have that. Um, but we have the goals to stream live for anybody who's not attending PowCon. We're going to be there. Um, we'll also be signing Catch the Crazies, Forbidden, Wonder Duck, There's Nailing in My Toilet, Cosmic Wars. Um Rush 5377, seven. the host, stuff. the host stuff we're going to be, and all of the children's books and ARG. Um, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so oh. it's, it's going to be, it's going to be off the chain. Look it for the banner with the logo, Catch the Craze on it. There you go. Yeah. And we're going to have, we're also good. well, Forbidden will be there. So if you, if you right. haven't, uh, if you didn't get a chance to, to do a, go on the Indiegogo campaign and get a copy, yes. it will be there. So definitely, definitely check it out. I've had actually people who, who I, uh, I work for that I work with checked out the show and they were like, Oh dude, where can I get this forbidden book? So if nice. you guys are watching, we will be at PowCon on May 29th. Yes. So come to the table and uh, get yourself a copy, get it signed. 
by the uh, by the artistas, yes. by the creator. And I have a limited run of sketch covers for Forbidden. I'll be doing Ooh. 10 commission sketch covers only. So you can pre-order. Um, I can send you the link and you can pay now. Um, you tell me which characters, whatever it is. Uh, and pick it up at the event or you can get it um, during the event but um, I won't be doing it there I'll be taking it home with me so if you're there for both days um, if you uh, want your commission cards on Saturday you'll get them on Sunday there you go your covers and, and for for everybody who's been asking about the the apparel and and, and, and all that other stuff it's coming it's We're coming working. almost We're there almost We're there I'm having some technical issues with Amazon We're but working. it's almost there Yes, yes. We definitely gonna have um, a lot of the stuff for the for the crazies. If you are interested in some of the stuff for like the Wonder Duck stuff that I have, you can go to my website at get your meds with a Z, get your meds with a Z dot com. Check it out there. And uh, go to crazycomics.com, C R A Z E E comics dot com. We have some cool stuff on that uh, website. You you can actually download some of these uh, books as ebooks on the website. So Word. check that out. There's, there's plenty of stuff. I mean we we're we're you know yeah, we're fire. trying to grow an empire here. Yes, I've been um, doing uh the sketch cards for the forbidden oh, um nice. the commission cards. Oh sweet look. Look at this. These are special requests um for forbidden. They, um, someone asked for Alf. Um so been working on all the commission sketch cards. I'm almost done. Oh here's another one. Shaku. Um so almost done with this. Looks like, like Wolverine the way the way his head just I, cut no. off on the thing. Yeah, it's like, uh, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I'm almost done with the sketch cards, and um, I'm done with the sketch cover. It's somewhere around here. Nice. It's somewhere around here, but I'm done with the sketch cover, and um, um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool. It's cool. I just want to get this campaign off my hands and out to you um, before the crazy start. You know. Um, wow. Yeah. So. I just want to clear clear the system. Yeah, and let us know what you thought about about the uh, the crazies and what you're thinking about the crazies and how you enjoy the crazies. Actually, on on the 29th when we go live, we, we, you know, if you guys are on there and you've read the book, let us know what you think. Let us know where you think the book is going. Uh, any theories you may have about where the story is headed? You know, we, we'd like we'd love to hear it. We'd love to hear that stuff. Word. You know. So. Uh, and that's the that's the, the that's the gist of so, what's going on in the house of craze. Um. Uh, let's see, we also are part of the uh, NSC Roadshow, so yes. you you've seen that promo in the beginning of the show. Just want to give um shout out to, to the, the team, team at NSC Roadshow, Roadshow and in Ink and uh, Kevin. What's up? Um, but yeah, so so far so good. Everything's uh, going good, um, except for my house is a poltergeist, and um, you know, <laughs> it's like uh, you got ghosts. Nah, it's just it's breaking down on me. It's a hundred oh. year old home, and uh, you know, the pipes are acting up. The, the roof. I had the roofers here today, um, and um, I have to get my pipes fixed um, because my sewage system, um, unfortunately, my line runs across my neighbor's property, which doesn't make sense to me. And so I'm trying to get the city to give me the maps of the sewage system, our pipe system, because, you know, I thought every home, it goes out to the street and then to the sewer. It connects to the drainage system. Ours goes right across my neighbor's property. So in order for me and where the obstruction is, is right on their property. So in order for me to have that obstruction opened and fixed, they have to dig on their property, on their lawn and on their steps. Um, on the outside by the curb. Um, so before I go that route, I want to make sure that the guys who did all that stuff and they use their machines to find all the, whatever, um, that it's legit because that's a difficult conversation to have with a neighbor saying, we're going to tear up your property and they, they're guaranteeing to put it back together, you know, because you're liable. Um, yeah. you know, so that's the frustrating thing. And I don't know how much that's going to cost. And I'm like, you know, I was like, <sighs> and then the car just picked up the car that was a five hundred dollar deductible. It's like, yo, money just going out. Money just going out. It's crazy. Yeah, hopefully you'll get that back though once they uh yeah once they once settle they, they settle everything you'll you'll get that back because you were hit yeah uh, from the back so yeah you you you're not you're not at fault there. Yeah. But yeah, man, it's been it's been a whirlwind, man. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy crazy time for you right now. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's peaks and valleys. <clears throat> you know, I think you know everything's cyclical. You know, they, like you go through these highs and lows, and now I'm in the valley. And I'm like, oh, 
You know, that's probably why I got this tire iron. I got I, I'm just like, yo, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be that comic nerd that, that just starts putting on weight. I was like, I'm gonna have like three chins. I was like, no, I can't do it. No. That's it, bro. That's it. <laughs> so I gotta. That's so it. tomorrow morning, I have nobody working on the house. Um, I'm going straight downstairs to work out for two hours. I'm gonna grind. Um, so that's where we are. There you go. That's and, where uh, we are. I've been trying to so, finish. I, I watched Invincible. Yeah. Uh, the last um, five episodes, five and six. Um, oh, six is out already. Yeah, Damn. yeah. Um, you I know, think I'm up to four and a half, maybe five. I can't really get into it like that, man. Yeah, I mean, it's no longer storytelling. It's just, it's just a shock <laughs> factor. You know, it's just is they're it? just forcing oh, really? everything in there fast and. Uh, Ugh, um, dude, it's terrible because that's a, that's a really really good comic, man. Yeah, it's a really, yeah. really well well-told comic book about the, the life of this teenage kid who becomes a superhero. Yeah, there's no pacing. It. There's no pacing in this. It just it just moves boom, 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 boom. Oh, man, that sucks, yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of figured that from the beginning when they hit, when they showed that that whole, you know, that scene at the beginning of the uh, of the first ish. I mean, first episode. And I'm like, wait, that doesn't happen yet. You know? I was like, ah, well. That's but you I know, said. I guess you know, and, and this is a thing where, like, when I have time, I watch it. Like, if you know, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, running to watch it on Friday. Yeah. Like, whenever I have time, I watch. It. That's why I'm so far behind. Um, I think the, the the Winter Soldier that that um, that show, I think uh, it's coming to an end. The next couple, I think it has one more episode, and that's it. Yeah, I got to catch up to that. I, I only watched it because we were on Nerd of the, the Round, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but I haven't watched it since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, check it out. But yeah, man, it's uh, and that's the thing about about these shows and these comics, right? Like, I was reading when I mean, we were talking about uh, Monte Michael Moore and what he's accomplished, right? And like oh, crazy. some of these, it's it's incredible. His his resume is insane. I mean, he's had some screenplays that were all, that were um, that Hollywood, you know, optioned. What's the word that they, yeah, optioned. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm like. What's the word? Yeah. Optioned. Um, he had uh, nine screenplays. He's written nine screenplays, produced two feature films, and sold five script options. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Redunculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two feature films already produced. Yeah. So yeah, so he's you know, he's been doing so that that's gonna be interesting and, and I can't wait to, to chat with him and talk to him about uh, the stuff that he's been doing for the last what thirty years, I think he said he's been in the industry. So yeah. he's been he's been doing it for a while. He's been doing it for a while and uh, at a high level. So that's that's awesome, and I'm glad that he's on the show today. Uh, I'm curious. I'm just going to refresh his page and see where he is as we were talking. You know how that sometimes happens where you're like, but it does it. But Kickstarter, Kickstarter does it real time. It does, right? It does real time because remember we were watching oh, yeah. this one campaign. It was just like boom, 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 yeah. boom, yeah. boom. Yeah. Like there were like thousands of people just pledging immediately. It was just yeah. crazy. Yeah, you know. I, speaking of Kickstarter, I just I just got an email today. I don't even know how they got my email. This particular. Um, campaign it was for uh, a stan lee book of all his of like a web comic that he was doing it's compiled into one book uh i can't remember the name of it I, i'll uh I, I i pledged it today i saw it i'm like all right got a pledge to it um they get me so i don't even know how they got my email but they're sl they're slick they're slick about it it's uh what is it <laughs> where is it where is it stan lee's back channel volume one it's made they were pledging uh they were asking for ten thousand dollars there's 548 backers, 28 days to go, and it's at $36,664. Just the name Stan Lee. That's oh, it. Oh, man, dude, that's what got me. It's name recognition. <laughs> like, that's all it Stan is. Stan Lee's you know, back like... channel volume one. I had no idea what it is. The artwork looks looks cool, though. Um, So so I backed it. I ended up backing. They had the PDF version, and then they had the soft cover version. They get you, though, right? And and they still and, the, and I still pledge. They tell you, okay, it's it was 24 bucks for the pledge, right? The shipping, they won't tell you how much it is <laughs> until they send you the survey. And my dumb ass still hit the... Uh, <laughs> $14. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be, I was thinking that. It's going to yeah. be like 14 15 maybe 20 is, is it, is it a, another book. Is it a hardback? No, no, no. It's a paper. It's paper how it's many paper pages? Back. 130. Oh, you're gonna pay about fourteen, twelve to fourteen dollars. <laughs> you become, you become a, <laughs> an expert in the topic. Yeah, because this it's, one it's is about no, this is not because it. it's over a pound, and over a pound has to be priority. Okay. And uh, so then, yeah. based on that, we'll determine. Oh, unless they do a flat rate, which is about twelve dollars. Yeah, because this one, this one's got a little weight. This and this is 144 pages, but yeah, no, this this is. So it's a flat rate. Yeah, you could do the flat rate priority, which is I think like twelve dollars or whatever. 
Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to get me for it, but I still pledged. It, it, but you're right. It's, it's name. It's name recognition. It, it's what it is. So. Yeah. That's what you know. I mean, and that's a lot of the the cats that have that have already built that foundation. Um, they. 99.9 percent of the times will be successful on any crowdfunding campaign uh, mm. where the challenge is, is all the other little guys that are trying to break in uh, that yeah. don't have that following they have to work tw 20 times harder to try to um build that recognition and that notoriety yeah. yeah yeah and you got to use every 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 tool at your disposal whether it's whether it's getting on a show on youtube you know your instagram account and everything like that because it's a numbers game. You, you know, you're not just because you put it, you say you have 750 followers on, and that's low, whatever, but like say you have, a, say you have a thousand followers on, on Instagram, the chances that all thousand of them are going to, are going to pledge to whatever you're posting. It's not realistic. It's never going to happen. Right. You're probably going to get out, out of those, out of those thousand. If you get, I don't know, five <laughs> of them to pledge or anything like that. So it's a numbers game. So you, you have to be in the tens of thousands, millions yeah. for you to get, you know, cause look, it, it's, it's Stan Lee, right? 500 people. That's it. You think about that. 500 people. And that was how many days in? Two days in. Yeah. That's just two days in. No, no. But, but, but my, my point is yeah. that, and that's Stan Lee. Right. You, you know what I mean? So if they don't know who you are two oh. days, you're probably doing what? 10 people. 15 people doing doing what we did every day <laughs> panic yeah, yeah. Remember, remember, <laughs> yeah. even especially on indiegogo bro like they were days with like no pledges what like yeah it was it, like it was, a, it was like five days went by with not one pledge and i was like <laughs> oh <laughs> indiegogo uh, and then all that's a, it's a learning experience yeah. man. all of it all yeah. of it is a learning experience man yeah. it really is but you know um it's the hustle. I think you got to be creative. You got to hustle. You got to network. You got to, you know, um, you have to uh, spend minimum. If you have a campaign and you're not known, a couple hours a day um, promoting. Uh, yeah. And you have to reach out to everybody who has some sort of uh, means of communicating to the public yeah. and see if they'll get you on or they'll promote you or spotlight you or, or review your stuff, whatever it is. Um, you just can't sit back and just assume that people are going to come to your doorstep. That doesn't work yeah, that way. That's right. And, and and then think about it. And then, because you have, okay, so you have the fact that maybe you don't have as many followers, but then you also, on top of that, you have the challenge of the algorithms that these, you know, that these, uh, you know, social networks are creating, whether, you know, they let you, you some of the things that you're posting, who, who's going to see them, how many people see them. You know, I, I have an ad running right now for the, uh, for our Kickstarter and it's a story that I put up there. I don't know who's seeing it. You know what I mean? Some of these, they give you the analytics and, and it's amazing how many people skip it. Like it tells you how many people skipped it, dude. I'm like, oh. that's no bueno. I'm like, yo, there's an option. Cause obviously, you know, you don't have to see the, the, the what you call it. So, but it, but that's, that's how like, that's how much the numbers matter, right? It gives you a number for skipped uh, story. Like if they skipped your story, there's many people skipped it, you know? <laughs> like, no. And that. again, it, it, a lot of it has to do with the images. Um, yeah. You know, and I think that makes the biggest difference in the world. Um, mm. So I see that our guest is in the rainy room. Oh, yeah, baby. Yes. So this episode of Cast the Craze is sponsored by... Do you have a Kickstarter campaign? And you're trying to figure out how to get the word out. You look online and you see the competition is fierce. Comic cons are slowly coming back, but in the meantime, how do you spread the word? You worked for hours creating your campaign. You post on as many social media sites as possible, trying to get the word out to no avail. Well, look no further. Why not sponsor an episode of Cast the Craze Podcast, the fastest growing indie podcast in the market today. That 30 second promo can get you an extra two to three backers or more. Who knows? Let's go. Hit the link below and get one step closer to a successful campaign. Hello there. Hey guys. How's it going? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Hanging in there. Hey, right. in there. You're killing it, man. You're killing it. We have Monty Michael Moore on the show, and his Kickstarter is on fire. Can you say fuego? 
Blood and, <laughs> Blood and Bullets is the name. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Thank appreciate you for you guys coming on. on. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So we have so much to talk about. Sam and I were just gushing over, o- over all the things that you've accomplished in the last 30 years of your career. So we have so much to get into um, that we want to ask you about. But I, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Sam start it up and uh, get it going here. Yes, well, this man needs no introduction. So, but, <laughs> uh, but you know, no, one of the cool things is that you live in Colorado. Yes, yeah, in Littleton, just south of Denver, so the Rocky Mountains are right outdoor. Nice, Ooh, yes, nice. my in-laws are in Aurora. Um, oh, yeah, yes. I was 10 years in Aurora. Yeah, yes. this is a good place. Every year until the past, last year and this year, I've, I've gone out there at least twice a year. Um, you know, we've been to Red Rocks, we've been up to the mountains, um, I love Boulder. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, when I heard you, and then when I, you know, when I, when I think in your press release it says that you look out, yeah, the, the, the view yeah, just right over there. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So well, there's snow out the window right now. Snow. So. Wow. Snow. Yeah. Crazy. So were you born and raised? Uh, born in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, raised on a cattle ranch in Idaho for most of my high school kind of formative years. And then uh, we, the family moved to Colorado in 88 and I went to, uh, well, art school. I went to college at Colorado State University and got uh, paid for my own way to go through college. And I got a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, and kind of specialized in graphic design and illustration. And when I was there, fortunately for me, I met some guys who were self publishing their own comic. And this was about 1992. And um, so they hired me to paint the cover because none of them were painters. Mm. And then we became friends. And rather than being sort of like a hired guy who just did one thing and left, I was just graduating college. I said, you know, what if I was part of the team and what if I colored the entire comic by hand with an airbrush? Oh my God. (laughs) So that was what I did for my spring break and lots of other things. I was, you know, trying to, to do this. And I never, at the time, I never had aspirations so big to go into comics. And fortunately, I went to the comic book store to see all the cool art. And one of the editors was like, hey, I know these guys and they've borrowed some money from their parents. They're producing their own book. You know, I think they should meet you because they need somebody to, to, to paint the cover mm. uh, over, you know, their drawing. So they right. did the drawing and the ink. And uh, their names are uh, Gabriel and Jacinto Hernandez, not the same as the Hernandez <laughs> brothers who did Love and Rockets. Different okay. Hernandez brothers. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, what was the book? Uh, and I thought maybe uh, it was. <laughs> so it, we self-published it. It was called Lords. It was supposed to be called Lords of Light, but some jackass had <laughs> copyright on the title because of a book that was written in the 60s. Ugh. And so we had to change the title. Then Diamond missolicited it. Oh. and said that it was going to be a black and white book, not color. There uh, goes all my work. Uh, um, so it still came out as color, but, uh, you know, we didn't get near the orders that we wanted to. And then, unfortunately, at the time, bad timing. I don't know if you guys remember or went to comics at the time, but yeah. 1993 was like this sort of butt crash, too much on the market. Yeah. People weren't reading oh, books. that too. Yeah, that's right. It just kind of tanked. That's so right. we went to, you know, we packed up this van with 3,000 issues, thing was sagging let me tell you (laughs) there's like six of us in this econo line van with all these issues in the back and off we go to this thing i'd never heard of called san diego comic-con in 93 and at the time there was about thirty thousand people who went but it was kind of nerds only right no Mm -hmm. girls no cosplay it was it was it was comics guys (laughs) period um and uh you know i i think we actually managed to sell about a thousand copies at the show in our little small small press table you know we're all eager and green behind the ears so it was a learning experience and we went back every single year even if we didn't have a new project nice um eventually we got invited to be an artist alley and so until covid hit I had never missed a San Diego Comic Con. Wow, years. that is fantastic! I have been every year since '93. That's wow. impressive, man. Are, are you <laughs> planning on making the trip out there this year, or and they're doing something in like November, I think, like a, during? Yeah, the- that's not going to be an official Comic Con. It's like their special event. So I think I'm going to hold off on that. Okay. Um, and wait till things kind of 
open a little more fully back up. I don't really have a problem doing shows, but mm -hmm. because I had done that show so much yeah. and my space is kind of guaranteed because I've already mm -hmm. prepaid for it, mm -hmm. they'll just hold it for me. And it gives me the opportunity if I want to do some other shows that yeah. would normally be in that time frame, or I can stay home for the summer, enjoy the great weather, you know, all the things I miss out on by having a summer full of conventions. Yeah. Wow. yeah no, so I, I want to just go back for a second because you said you, you were airbrushing the, uh, the, the comic pages. So yep. what were some of the tools you used? What was the size of the, the what, what type of paper did you use? Um, and uh, it was, it was all pretty bad. Um, <laughs> even though I'm, a, I'm a pretty good uh, airbrush guy. At least I am now. I wasn't as good then. I, I've been doing it for four or five years, but um, you know, we worked on pages that were uh, 11 by 17. They were photocopies oh, of, man. of uh, Chachi's inks. So we weren't working over the original inks and I couldn't use really any masking film because it would lift up the photocopy ink. Right. Yeah. So oh, wow. I was really trying and there was like crazy crowd scenes and all sorts of stuff. So here I am with this airbrush. If I was doing it now, I wouldn't even, I would <laughs> use that for like backgrounds and fades and stuff, right. but I didn't know any better, any different. I wanted to be an airbrush guy. <laughs> and like that was my goal. I love the airbrush. I was the airbrush guy. And, um, you know, if I had to do it today, I'd be breaking out like color pencils and the sure. Copic markers and, you know, a little airbrush in the background and probably go, look twice as good and go twice as fast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How long did it take you to airbrush a, a page back, in, back then? Oh, I think each page took me 10 hours. If I remember correctly, wow. kind of insane. Ambitious. And, the, and, yeah. and the sort of heartbreaking part about it now is I still have a portfolio that has the pages in it. Mm -hmm. But because they've been in there for over 25 years, yeah. stuck to the it's stuck oh, to the plastic. Yes. So you, you can still take see the art, but you can you never take, take it out because it'll just destroy it. Oh wow! So, wow. So you're a lot of amateur mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> but those are the th those learning curves, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So what 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 were some of the takeaways from that first appearance at San Diego Comic Con that you use now, and what some of the things that you just eliminated? You know from that experience? I must be a slow learner because I did the same <laughs> thing with movies back in 2010 where we had our own money in it. We went and did a feature film and oh. that too did not bear any fruit. Great, <laughs> a, a project I'm proud of. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, won some awards, got to work with some great people. However, it did not make any money. So <laughs> the main takeaway from San Diego that first year is, hey, we need to go make comics for other people who are going to pay us <laughs> and not use our own money. So, you know, back then there was only like three or four conventions in the whole country. Damn. It was like WonderCon, there was San Diego, there was DragonCon, a couple others, that was it. Damn. And so you had to wait a really long time that if you were doing something, say commissions or sketches or whatever, you, there was no internet. Yep. You, you couldn't do commissions for people really remotely unless you took a commission at a show. So sure. somebody might be like, Hey, I want a painting of, you know, the rocketeer. And you'd be like, okay, um, how about 300 bucks, you know, and you, they get like a big full, like, you know, <laughs> painting. And we're like, woo, um, you know, cause you're doing sketches like everybody else and you're charging five, 10, 15 bucks, you know, not yeah. today's market where you're like, Oh, that's hundreds of dollars or that's thousands. Right. Um, and, uh, so you you had to work on your game and your skills throughout the year and then go to San Diego and hope for the best five days of your life. Yeah. And when we were mailing samples, trying to get people like Heavy Metal or Chaos Comics or Marvel or DC, right? You had to try to uh, find the address like everybody else, yeah. print off some photocopies, write a cool letter, send it in with you know printed copies of your samples. Um, so my first freelance job came in 96, 97 yeah. with a small company that's not around anymore called lightning comics mm -hmm. and their title was called Helena. And for a couple of years, it was kind of a bad girl craze in comics yeah. in that kind of mid nineties. So it was like ballistic yes. and, uh, J Scott Campbell obviously was already around. Randy queen had dark child and, you know, figures were kind of getting longer, and, you know, girl comics, girl titles for the first time ever started becoming popular. Because yeah. when I first started, honestly, literally one of the only female comics that were around was Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. 
some related titles. Then Lady Death came along in the right. um, early 90s. And uh, there's very few, very yeah. few female titles. There was one, that's that's probably when Dawn, when Dawn started coming out too, right? Uh, Joseph Lindner, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely probably time. early mid early mid 90s, yeah, maybe even yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah, I, and actually, yeah, he might have even self-published around ninety, yeah. somewhere between ninety-one, ninety-three. Wasn't I Ballistic think, so part of there. Cyberforce? No, Ballistic was these kind of cheeseheads who um, were like really over the top, sort of big guns and wearing black latex. Oh yes, like yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I yeah. And one of the guys who was in charge of that was it was just kind of a weird deal, but his name was Ricky Carolero, and he was taking credit for Carlos. Not Carlos. He was taking credit for Armando Huerta's work. Oh, wow. Because Armando was still out of the country, couldn't speak English, didn't know somebody was saying, no, no, I made all this. this. And he was like rock star at the show. Many, many years later, it came out and he was wow. outed. Wow. Oh, wow. He pulled yeah, a mini yeah. of a lily. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's no good. His name's kind of mud. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. But yes, yeah, so, so yeah, you... I know some dirt. <laughs> you, know, you do. You gave us some dirt over Scoop. here. Scoop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then in 19, I, I'm just reading through you, through your, through your, um, through your Bio? stuff here. Yeah. And uh, apparently in 1998, you, you won the world fantasy art show. So tell me about winning that back in 98. What was that all about? Um, so it's, it's kind of a weird convention because the world is called world fantasy con and it's more literary and it's more art related. So there's no comics. And so they usually their guests of honor, are like authors and they're doing readings and it's kind of, it's a little bit like, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so, but I'm like, well, you know, I want to be a fantasy artist. This is cool. Um, and in 98, I went to my first gen con, which is a gaming convention. And I started getting my first gaming art in 98 with magic the gathering and D, &D and stuff so i was like man and and i grew up honestly more of a sci-fi and a gaming guy i was playing D, &D back in 79 yeah, and yeah. then i was comics because i had to read my buddy's comics because my mom would buy us like archie and richie rich and stuff like that but she didn't really want us to have like hulk smash and things so <laughs> you know we always traded comics at at uh, at at school um but anyway so you i go to this convention and there's really not many people there it's almost like you set up your booth in this art show and then other than maybe like uh a, a, a deal where they have like a, an opening where you can kind of stand around your art and talk about it if you want there's not really a reason to be there so i me and some other artists actually went scuba diving in monterey <laughs> because we we're like well shit we didn't really know we don't have anything to do because it's not like a booth where you sit there right and um so then at the end of it, it is very kind of non plus, you know, they hand out these awards and I don't even remember like a big announcement. It was like, Oh, by the way. And I'm like, Oh, I got a ribbon. Look, and it says, <laughs> you know, best black and white. And it was for, a, this is a funny comic story, actually. Mm, okay. If you do a search for um, Monty Moore and the art is probably called daydreams and nightmares. And it's actually a drawing of dark child who I mentioned earlier, who is a comic character. It was done by Randy Queen, who was this overnight flash in the pan in the 90s. Right. Sold a bunch of comics, thought he was the new Rob Liefeld, you know, and then he disappeared like two years later. Right. So I do this drawing of his character, and she has like little jean shorts. She's standing on a bunch of skulls. Um, she got a little um, smiley face patch on her pocket. Anyway, that was the drawing that won that year. And then two years later, I won for uh, a mermaid drawing called Sensatiable. Um, that's also now a sculpture as well. Uh, so those were like good PR things, but you kind of have to tell people about it because outside of that circle, right? like a lot of the rest of the industry doesn't really know because it's a little bit insular because it's more about authors Right. Um, and, and they would have like a big baller guest artist who'd be there, but that wasn't me at the time. These would have been like guys who had won Hugo's and Chesley's and, you know, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so that was good PR. And then that helped me start doing some black and white drawings in a series called the gallery girl books by, uh, Sal Cortuccio. And um, he's an East Coast publisher who did these books where he'd go out and he'd hire all these artists to do, he'd say, okay, it's called Treasure Chess and it's all just sexy pirates, mm. right? So he'd hire like 20 guys and say, I need four from you, I need three from you, I need two from you. 
So I was in a couple of his mermaid books. And I think by the second or third drawing I turned in, he was like, holy crap, do you want to do a whole book? And I'm like 25. So I was like, uh, really? Like, what, is, what does that mean? He's like, well, I need like 80 drawings from you. Wow. I said, okay, give me like six months to a year. And so I think the first book maybe came out in 98. So I would have been... 28 years old, somewhere in there. Um, really young, because I can remember other artists coming around who I adored, who were just amazing. And they'd be like, yo, man, like, how'd you get a book? Like, I, I've been in the industry 20 years. I don't have a book. I'm like, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and my last Kickstarter before this one was for my ninth art book. So there's nine, wow. there's nine art books since that time of my artwork. That's awesome. That's Monty. crazy. I, yeah, no, I, I was also, you know, and, and as and as artists and creators, and, and Sam and I have been doing this for a little while too, you know, mm -hmm. you, you you hear about all of the rejection letters, right? Oh, all, God, all, I have all, a stack of them over here. So I, I, I wanted to ask do. you, I wanted to ask you, because obviously a person who like you who's been in the industry for that many years, you've, you've seen a lot and you know a lot. Mm -hmm. So how did you handle and how did you take the rejections and how did you turn that into a positive? Like you know, for somebody who's going through it right now, who's getting all this stuff, what would you say to that person? What, what, what did you do? It's... It's really difficult because the thing is, is we artists, creators, it doesn't matter if it's the written word or, you know, any sort of art you create, music, you know, it's like a chef who, you know, somebody goes, oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah. And it's painful. It really hurts because you created that, yeah. that thing. And so um, somebody was, another artist was lamenting online about, hey, I can't believe these people don't respond back to me, right? Art directors. And I, I just, I had to sort of say, hey, you know what? get used to it <laughs> yeah. because 99 percent of the time they will never respond because they have that many submissions right right and or they're only contacting the people they say hey i like your work and let's do some work and i i do have um uh so i'll tell you a story about that that was one of my big breakthroughs that okay. was uh, okay. sort of unsolicited but to your point of how do you handle that i tell people you have to use that rejection as fuel for the fire. And it's, there's, there's a, a Toby Keith country song and he says, how do you like me now? Yeah. Right. You didn't like me when I was in, I was a you know punk kid in high school and you're the pretty girl and you wouldn't pay attention to me. Now look at me, I'm on the radio, solid gold, you know, double platinum. How do you like me now? Yes, right. And so the, you know, the success is I'm going to show them mm. that they're wrong. Now what you learn as an artist is, is that, you might not be ready now, but when you get to that level, if you don't give up, then they will say yes. And you say, I'm going to keep working hard. Right. I'm going to outwork everybody else. When they're sleeping, I'm going to be getting better. So I'm like a 70, 80 hour of work kind of, kind of guy. I will work till 2, 3 a.m. on a regular basis, sleep by about six hours, get up, back to work. So you got to, you got to kind of outwork the competition because that's how you build skills. No, nobody's here because they're talented. Mm. They're here because they learned skills, right? It's like a sword maker. It's dull when you first bring it out of thing, but man, you got to spend hours making that, you know, a samurai sword when it's done and you got those skills, then it's sharp mm. and you can cut anything. So that's, you know, that's kind of how I look at building skills and artists, but quick story. I was at uh, Chicago comic-con young art director, a junior art director for wizards of the coast who at the time had Pokemon uh, dungeons and dragons. Well, actually had they bought, I think they had already Hasbro hadn't bought them yet. So they were still wizards of the coast, but they had magic, you know, and magic, the gathering had been around for, I don't know, like 10 years or something. And so this guy comes up and he sees my work and he's like, Hey, you know, I like your work. I think my, my boss who's the art director would like your work too. Here's my card. So I'm like, cool, great. This is exciting. You know, hold on to it, you know, never lose it. And uh, so I send in some samples and I don't get any response as normal because they tell you later on, cause I asked, you know, where do those samples go? Oh, they go into a giant freaking room in the back. It's just piles of portfolios and mail and stuff. And every so often, maybe if uh, an art director is looking for something new, they'll go look at that. Right. But for the most part, they're just going to use their tried and true guys that they know we're going to deliver on time. Yeah. And so um, this guy, I forgot his name, but he worked for an art director. His name was Paul Hanchett. And um, 
I almost, I, I'm pretty, uh, believe it or not, I'm pretty shy when I'm, when it comes to, yeah, I don't want to, you know, make people feel um, like you're bothering them, right? right. So, yeah. Well, they must not have liked my work. I'm not going to call. <laughs> and for some reason that day I had some cojones and I was like, I'm calling this guy. I got his number. He actually answers the phone or I asked for him wow. and he's like, hi, this is Paul. And I'm like, hi, Paul, you don't know me. My name is Monty Moore, but so-and-so who works for you said that you might like my work. And were you able to review the samples I sent? And he said, you know what? Never saw him. Resend them to me. Wow. And this was at a time when the, you could I'm trying to remember if you could even send attachments, the internet was around, but you couldn't really send images very well. Right. So we were still using fax machines. Mm -hmm. And so you would take, you know, a piece of art, which looks shitty on fax, by the way, and you would try to fax it to them anyway, or maybe I just was like, I'm paying for the FedEx overnight. Here's my stuff. Yeah. So he calls me back and says, you know what? I like your stuff. You know, you seem, uh, you know, hungry. Yeah. For the work. I'm like, right? you called I'm them like, up. I, I won't let you down. And he said, I, I gave this, this book assignment for a wraparound book cover for a sci-fi book that was called zero point. And, um, uh, he said, this guy's had it like six months and my deadlines are like two weeks. I got nothing from him. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, you know, yeah, I can do that. And he's like, okay, it's a wraparound book cover. All I can give you. Cause the art, the, the author was still finishing it or something. I couldn't even read the book. <laughs> and so, he was like, okay, this guy is going to be like a Han Solo type. And there's like a lizard dude and there's a sci-fi city. And there's a girl who's a, a mechanic and she's Asian. Like he knew the character description. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that's not how to go on. But the next day I had killer sketch for him. Uh -huh. I literally had my buddy Chachi come over and I was like, dude, you gotta, I gotta take photos. Like you need to be my guy. <laughs> Cause he's pretty GQ dude. Right. Right? <laughs> and so he's totally on the cover. Chachi Hernandez is the model for the cover. Oh, just the name That's Chachi right. says it all. Chachi, well, you, yeah. you, right. Chachi Hernandez. He was named, they were born in Peru and he was named after there was a race car driver whose name was Chachi and oh, that's his nickname. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, he's a great dude um, and a great artist. Uh, so anyway, I, I got the job. I turned the painting around and in very short order, my career took off nationally because not only did I start getting jobs from him, right. but then he'd be like, you know, Hey, uh, you know, Larry over here is working on dragon magazine. Um, let me introduce you to him. And I was like, let me fly up there. I'll deliver the art in person. <laughs> we'll go to lunch. So he and I became friends. I ended up staying with him. Wow. And then Harry Potter came along. I got to work on Harry Potter. I got to work nice. on magic. Um, they were redoing third edition Dungeons and Dragons. They hadn't redone Dungeons and Dragons in 20 years. Yeah. And as a big time nerd, you, you could have knocked me over with a fork when I get this assignment that says, yeah, your illustrations that you're going to get to do are the orc and the troll wow. and the wyvern. And, all, you know, I'm looking at all this stuff and I'm like, ah! <laughs> you know, I would do that for free, but that's I'm not awesome. gonna. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Oh my God. So yeah, seriously nerd moment. So really for the next 10, 15 years, I did a lot more work in gaming yeah. and less in comics, but I always went to San Diego Comic-Con. I always went to other shows, but I kind of became known more of a fantasy guy and a pinup artist. Mm. And then it's really been in the last, since 2014, 15 that I was like, you know, I do, you know, comics is, you know, really kind of ramped up since then. And so ever since I started doing covers for uh, Brian Polito and Lady Death, that's helped out my, uh, my, I don't know, notoriety, my yeah. public image, because I have a lot of fans from that. And then a lot of the other indie publishers like Marat Michaels, Nadia and Nice, and they're like, oh, you, you drop a girl's pretty good. You know, you want to do a cover, you know, and I do all my artwork traditionally. So I make part of my living selling the drawings and the paintings yeah. and believe it or not, I was gonna, I, I was very close to almost becoming a digital colorist wow. and uh, Clydeen Nee, who is the head of artist alley at San Diego, whose brother, John Nee is now the head of DC comics. Wow. Uh, she used to be a colorist. She was the one that very first colored spawn. She came up with Todd McFarlane's like, Hey, I don't know what these colors looks like. I drew this dude. So she helped do the first color mock-up for him because wow. she had her own coloring business called in color. Uh -huh. And um, so anyway, I had a conversation with her and I said, Hey, I got hired to do this comic that was called CC. That was going to be a four issue miniseries by a friend of mine written here in Colorado. And I was like, I, I don't know how to digitally color, you know, and, and 
it was just in its infancy. This is yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. And um, she was like, you know what? She said, I think you should follow your passion for drawing and painting. And she said, my advice to you is tell them you'll do the covers for them, but don't become a colorist. Become right. an illustrator and keep hmm. drawing and painting. And I said, that's really good advice. I think I'll do that. And so yeah. I never... I never did, you know, coloring really again. I can, I know my way around Photoshop just sure. fine, but yeah. I, I would rather be in an art table than sitting in front of a computer. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting, Monty, because like the decisions we make, right? Like, like you, you, you said yourself, you're not really that guy that, that kind of has the cojones to just go up to somebody because you don't want to bother them. You did it right. that you're day. Like, and it changed. Nah, I'm gonna yeah. be a pain and it the changed ass. and it changed everything. It changed everything. It so sometimes you just have to take that step and, and, and do what you got to do to get all that stuff done. That's an amazing story, man. And thank you for sharing that with yeah. us. That's great, dude. Well, and you and you got to pay your dues, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little bit jealous about a lot of the artists today who are able to not only get their art but their face in front of fans. Right. And you know, fans are like, "Oh my god!" You know, I love what you do. And I was like, "Jesus Christ, we didn't have any of that," yeah. you know, back then. And mm -hmm. so you kind of feel like you're late to the party. Yeah. Even though I've been on Facebook since like maybe '08 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a lot easier now to as an amateur artist you can you can make some side money you can make plenty of side hustle yeah. and not do any comics and just draw you know Joker and Harley Quinn and Batman for you know for the fans and go yeah. get an artist table but you know we we had to out hustle everybody else and you had to be hungry now, now yeah. the industry was a lot smaller then you know, sure. there was a lot fewer sure. artists now yeah. thanks to marvel and the movies like comics are cool they weren't uh, cool right, when right. i was people were like but, really you're a comic and, and, artist and, and that's the other thing though like we talk about this all the time with sam even on kickstarter when you go through kickstarter the amount of art books or or Crazy. like just it's just insane so the competition has just quadrupled or just it's infinite like at this point it's kind of you know, infinite just, I, yeah you know, it's infinite at this point and, and there's know? and there's producers out there and i hope to up my game on how many i'm producing because it's the new way of the world yeah right because mm -hmm. i don't want to have to give up my rights now if i mm -hmm. took a great story to idw or dark horse or something like that let me tell you they're going to own the rights or they're going to sell it to somebody else mm-hmm Right now, maybe not with image. I don't know how that works because they were supposedly more of the creator own deal. Right. Yeah. But you know, my ultimate goal with both Loco Hero and Blood and Bullets, I have a new anthology I'm starting up that's going to be like Tales from the Crypt, like kind of darker, awesome. you know, noir stories. Is I want to own those rights and those characters so that when I go to Hollywood connections and things like that, I want to say. Yeah, you know, this would make a great streaming series. Wouldn't you like to see mm -hmm. Local Hero mm -hmm. as a TV series? Because there's nobody on TV that's a Latina war veteran who's crazy and thinks she's a comic book hero, but she's doing all the right things for kind of the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. But it's you know it's super fun, and you know somebody's gonna go. You know what? That's pretty. That's pretty good. Let's <laughs> let's give that a try. Right. Yeah. You hope. Yeah, you right. hope yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. You hope. Right. Yeah. 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 Which is. A great segue into Blood and Bullets. Where did the concept come from, um, and when did you start working on it? Um, so, uh, yeah, quick funny story. So I, I bought this software to write screenplays around Christmas in like 08. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even write. I didn't even read a book on how to write a screenplay. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and the cursor's blinking, and I'm like, there's four <laughs> friends around the fire. Right. You know, and I just I started writing this, like, kind of uh, crazy horror story. Yeah. And um, so this guy optioned it, and it was a big disaster because he tried to rush it into production and make it in Lake Powell. It was a big mess. So the movie didn't get filmed. I learned a lot, mostly what not to do. Yeah. But I've met some other great people who work in the industry in the indie side of things, right? We're in the we're talking the very low end of the pond here, right? right? Yeah, this right, is right. no budget filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, but I was the art director on the project. So I, you know, I was making all the props and the blood and the guts and the you know, costumes and stuff. It was cool. Um, so I kind of got the bug you know, for doing film. And so when I was down there, another guy had met a friend of mine named Ace Underhill. He now has a production studio in uh, LA called Brilliant Screen Studios. But when 15 years ago, was it 10? I guess it was 10, yeah, 10, 10 12 years ago. Um, we're sitting around on the movie set that they called the murder boat. Cause it just looked like literally just like just blood everywhere. Carnage, <laughs> right. And we decided we didn't want to sleep with the rest of the cast back on shore. So we stayed yeah. on the boat. Right. It was this like, big houseboat. Anyway, he's like, hey, a friend of mine owns a Western set. 
like, Hey, do you, you know, I like your writing. Do you want to, and I'll help you write it if you want. Do you want to do a, a, a Western movie? And I'll, I'll, sh- I'll send you pictures of what all the stuff is on the set and you can use it and then write a screenplay. So he and I wrote the first one together and it was called dead by sundown. And over the years, it's actually had a bunch of people attached to it, like Billy Zane and Doug Jones wow. and Brian Austin Green and a whole bunch of people. Um, but anyway, you can market your work online as a writer. And another producer who had done some small family-friendly Western kinds of shows for like Lifetime Channel, she read the script and she said, I love this script. I love what you're doing here with this sort of Western vampire. I've never kind of seen that. However, it's kind of a male-dominated script you know, all your main characters are dudes, right? And there's a love interest and she's the, you know, uh, she's the babe, but you know, not a lot of meat there for, you know, female actresses. And so yeah, I'm so hungry. I'm like, well, what if I wrote you a new script? Like, if, you know, I'll have it, I'll have it done in a month. Like, what do you want? <laughs> and so I wrote an all new script, blood and bullets. And that was what Ooh. it was called from the beginning. And actually the piece of art that's here that. up behind yeah. me with the big T that, that yeah. was the very first piece of concept art. And so I cranked out the script. I created new characters that the, the lead character's name is Mary Masterson. Her nickname is Bloody Mary. And she drinks, you know, tomato and booze and that kind of thing. And, um, but then there's, there's also some cultural issues because her brother is married to a woman named Blackbird. I was reading that. uh, Who's from the Pima or Maricopa people. And so neither, uh, neither cultures want the other one like with them. So like dad wants her to come back and everybody in town's like, get her out of here, you know, kind of thing. So there there is some cool cultural issues in the story. It's not just, I don't know, action or cheesecake or anything like that. It's also very Shakespearean, right? Like where where you have the two families who don't get along kind of, you know what I mean? I I love that, that angle of it also. Thank you. Uh, You're the first person to point that out. (laughs) So she, so she quotes Shakespeare and even the very opening like page of the book. Spoiler. And there's three or, (laughs) and there's three or four um, quotes when she's, you know, about ready to, you know, get nasty or she's wandering along. She has a dog named Hamlet. And so Hamlet Ah. accompanies her wherever she goes. And he's a faithful sidekick. Everybody loves Hamlet. And um, so, yeah, you know what? It's interesting that you bring that because I never thought of like the whole sort of capulet. Yeah, it kind of, uh, yeah, it kind of fits. It kind of fits. I thought you, I thought you might have done that on purpose. I didn't realize you did. Yeah, totally. No, I did. That's what it was. It was what it was. That's how you roll. (laughs) It's it's awesome. Dude, I I, got to tell you, I'm very impressed uh, at the fact that, you know, here you are, you know, you had that software and you just cranked out these and you've had a few scripts that you, you've, you've completed ton, and yeah, let me 11, tell you or, 11 or 12 total. And, and that's I've done a couple incredible. where I've gotten paid to write for other people. So that's yeah. like more of like a ghostwriter kind of a deal right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where somebody might be like, dude, I owned a bar for 20 years and I got this idea for a story and it's about me and all this crazy crap that happens to me, you know? So you're just a paid writer. Yeah, um, yeah. But then I have a horror. So blood and bullets was optioned three or four times by the producer and she did go make other movies, but a lot of times you go to money guys and gals Mm -hmm. and you say, I have these three projects that I have options or rights on. What would you like to make? And they might say, well, I want the girl in the horse lifetime movie story. Okay. I'm not into vampires. And so they're like, okay, that one's off. So it just doesn't get made. And then you get your rights back. Right. Okay. Um, and then at the same time, I had another project that was the very first script that I told you I wrote. It was like four people around a campfire. Yeah. It was called uh, uh, Undisturbed the first time. Then it was called Cutter. And um, it was optioned probably four or five times as well. And so it was kind of tied up through the kind of early 2000s. Yeah. And then those folks didn't end up getting their money either. They had, again, they had some name talent attached. Sure. Um, God, what's his name? He played Azriel or in um, X Men First Class, and he oh, was yes. in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Bullets. He's the tall, really skinny mm-hmm. guy yeah, with a real heavy accent. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, he was going to be the sort of lead bad guy in that one. So, I, I was on my way to an art show earlier this year down in Arizona, and I don't know how this idea came to me, but I thought, you know, I have all these other stories, but I can't just, you know, crank them out you know, what if I were to do like an anthology? So right now I'm in the beginning of an anthology idea called the midnight cafe. Mm. And that's going to be where I'll take some of these shorter stories that maybe don't have quite as much meat and depth to them and put them in there as either a short story or maybe just a couple of issues. Mm -hmm. And there'll be like three, three 
three stories in every episode. That's awesome. Um, but Blood and Bullets, believe it or not, my rock star artist, his, uh, he's Italian. His name's Silvano Beltramo. Fantastic name. You know, a lot That's of guys have some really unique names. Right? <laughs> and, um, so he literally, I, I hired another artist uh, who was, I think, maybe from the Philippines or Brazil. I think Brazil. And Brazil's been just going through like crazy rough times the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and so he was on two different projects that I had and I really liked his artwork. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to hang in there with you. I'm going to hang in there with you. And like four years went by wow. on both Loco Hero and Blood and Bullets. And I was like, I, I got to cut bait. And I got to start over. Mm-hmm. And so another friend of mine in the Netherlands who self publishes his own book, Richard Boom said, you know, let me, let me help you find some artists. You know, I know Europeans and I know different stuff. I'm like, this is freaking great. And so he showed me Silvano's work and he immediately did a test page for me. And not only since Christmas did he already rock out the entire book, he's literally 10 pages away from finishing the second issue. Wow. So since December, you're talking 100 pages. Oh, my God. And I know for a fact that he took about a three- or four-week break between episodes <laughs> to go do another book for someone else. What? He's yeah. an animal. How many yeah. does he do How a much, day? Dude, Ooh. put me back on your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! So, so how, how come you you didn't you didn't do any of the drawings on the book? Is there, was there a reason why you decided just to be the writer and creator of it rather than the artist? I had well? a I had a hard time with that for a long time. I'll, yeah. I'll be honest. That was probably my biggest struggle to self publishing. Like I had these stories, mm-hmm. and I'm just not a great sequential artist. I, I did know? one project yeah. for a customer. I got paid. It was never published. I might try to see if I can publish it in. Uh, the anthology, but it's not my work. So I can't just mm-hmm. be like, Hey, I drew all this, yeah, you yeah. know, and I hired the colorist and everything. And and I want to say that was maybe like, Oh, eight or 10. And, and things were pretty lousy in comics. And you know, if the prices of originals, people weren't buying stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do this comic for you. Sure. And uh, so, but I, I'm not fast. You know, there's guys out there do multi pages in a day. Yeah. And as an illustrator, my forte is, you know, full color, more yeah. elaborate cover arts, what. maybe. I just, yeah, I like being cover artist and fine artist and things like that. And so I, I kind of run the gamut with that. And so when I first started Blood and Bullets, I was like, okay, this guy's gonna draw it, and I'm gonna color it, and I'm gonna letter it. And mm-hmm. so it'll be letters created, and you know, cool. colored by Monty. And I was doing kind of a look. I deleted them all from the Facebook page because I wanted it to stay fresh with what we're doing, but it was a real rustic brown. It, it looked like old paper, so it uh, wasn't a bright, modern kind of comic. Yeah. And uh, the problem is I probably fell in love with that, and so I held on too long mm. before bailing and saying, screw it. I'm starting over, new artist. That money's gone. Yeah. You know, starting over at page one. And I think within a week, it was like, here's your first five pages. I'm like, Oh my God, the last guy took like three years to get, you know? <laughs> and um, so uh, I was very happy I made that decision yeah. and that helps me be where I am today with somebody who could foreseeably come out with multiple um, projects a year. You know, I look up a lot to Brian Polito and, and, and uh, Coffin Comics. And so I try to do like what he does in like really small form. No, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. I, I, I also see uh, on your on your Kickstarter, and, and, and you're doing very well. And congratulations, because this this book Thank looks you. amazing. But you've you also, but you're also taking some of the money that's being made in the book, and you're and you're actually uh, donating it. So mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about about that uh, philanthropic mm-hmm. work that you're doing? Yeah, and um, I, I guess maybe growing up in a military family, and you know, just parents who were like, "Hey, you know, if you're doing well, you should give back," and things like that. So, mm-hmm. we came up with the idea in the last kick in the previous comics Kickstarter, which was Loco Hero Number One, which uh, blew out my expectations and raised fifty grand. Nice. But I I did a piece that ended up being this very. PTSD kind of awareness kind of a piece. And, and it really just evolved. I didn't set out. It wasn't like, Oh my God, my goal is to do this. And it's falling in the slot. I literally, I drew the figure and then I added a bunch of pages behind it. And then I put the flag over and I'm like, Whoa, this is powerful. Mm -hmm. And I have a a guy who works for me here in the studio named Joshua Andrews. And he and I were talking about it. And I said, you know what? I'd like to make like a special tier and anybody who gets this covered, that money's donated to 
uh, help our veterans. And it ended up, of course, it ended up being our most popular tier. And so we raised over $3,000 wow. on just that one tier. Nice. So I was like, you know what? This feels really good and people mm-hmm. like it. And it helps differentiate me against many other great publishers that sure. are out there that aren't including that. So on my last art book, there was one called Hearts and Horses because it was uh, that book had some Western art in it. And so that's a equine therapy where they help people with disabilities and they use horses. Oh, wow. And so uh, that's here in Colorado. And then um, we did a bunch of research online for the giving more tier for this uh, particular Kickstarter because you want the organizations that you're working with to have a really good reputation on what they're doing for their communities, how they're managing their money, what they give back, and and that sort of thing. So um, the I believe it's the Native American Heritage Association. Association. Yep. Yes. And – uh, they had a platinum rating online. You can go out and look at different philanthropy organizations, make sure that when you give money to somebody, it's not like, hey, man, that guy just bought a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, and um, yeah, so um, yeah, it's something that I'm proud of. Uh, and I and the, the fans of, I think, starting now, this is my third Kickstarter doing it, are, are you know, they react to it as well. Nice. So they, I think so- it's important. Yeah, no, absolutely. So this is uh, so when you pledge to what does that might now go to that? Uh, yeah, the giving more tier, okay. and so you still get the product and everything, mm-hmm. you know, like that. You're getting to support yeah. Blood and Bullets, mm-hmm. and it tells you what you get there in that tier. And you can still people can still do other add-ons, but the yes. reason why that's its own tier is that it's easily for us to track that money yeah, and say, sense. okay, here's what the book costs. Here's, here's all the profit from that book. Here's who we're going to give it to. And then you send them a check and say, hey, you might not have known this, but we did this for you. Here you go. That's and awesome. that particular organization um, does a lot of really on-the-ground work with a lot of the, the people up north and in North Dakota and things like that who really struggle not only financially but with food and education and things like that. So um, everything we, we saw about them said that they were pretty rock-solid people, you know, helping it- their people. And it's a beautiful piece, Monty. I got to tell you, I'm looking at it right now. It's a really, really beautiful piece. The print that you guys are are are, um, are doing is for it's, it's amazing. So good job. Yeah, so, thank you. So that was there was about four or five different pieces that I'd done, and I brought them together into one piece. Mm. So the the initial um, portrait there was a piece called America's Daughter, which was kind of my version of a very young, beautiful Sacagawea. Mm-hmm. And it won um, People's Choice Award in 2019 for oh, an man. online art competition that runs for a year. Um, but then I also wanted I wanted to tie it in with some of the animals and the, the Native American culture. And so that's why I also brought in, you know, the wolf and the bison and the eagle. And, you know, the background was part of the original art. And it really came together. And I was like, oh, wow, I think people are going to like this. <laughs> nice. And um, because I also have to, you know, as the – Kickstarter kicked off. I'm actually working on new art as we go. So like the big irons art and uh, the one that I did of Blackbird called Dark Spirits, those have both been drawn and revealed during the first, you know, 10 days to two weeks of the campaign. So right. now do you know the, uh, are, have you prepared each stretch goal um, um, incentive or do you wait to see if you break a threshold and then you have something or did you have that already planned for the 35, uh, 40, 45? We have, like, we have like up to 40 already sort of planned. Right. Um, and Josh and I have sort of discussed it. So I might not have something created, right. but I kind of left some of that to him. And so like, I know that uh, I think it's at 40,000 is the pin, the Mary Masterson arms pin. And yes. I haven't revealed what it's going to look like, but I can tell you guys because nobody's watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to look like the back of a shotgun shell. Nice. And it's going to cool. say Masters in Arms. And that ties in with the story because her brother is a blacksmith oh, uh, nice. in, in the story and, and works on firearms and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, we have cool stuff planned, but uh, – you know, we're not the most super organized. We still kind of just like wing stuff. And he's like, how about three card Monty? And there's these different cards and they're metal. I'm like, that's awesome. How much is that going to cost? He's like, you know, I'm like, okay, before we announce that, find out, make sure those don't cost like $10 each. Yes. That, that makes a difference. That makes the biggest well, yeah, difference. Cause, yeah. I mean, in a good campaign like this, I will tell you, and, and, and Brian, somebody who has 3000 backers, you spend thousands of dollars on yeah. cool swag yes. and cool mm-hmm. swag is also what gets people to not only back your campaign, but also share it. 
Yes. Yeah. That's one of the few incentives out there. If somebody's already backed their tier and they're like, yeah, you know, I put $50 down or 25 or hundred on Monty's Kickstarter, but you know, instead of getting four free cool items, they might get 10 or 12, right? right? Yeah. If it gets up like Loco Hero did. So that's like the really cool incentive that's grown out of Kickstarter where you can say, Hey man, share it out on my page. You know, maybe your buddy comes and supports it. Cause like right now we're within, I don't know, we're within a, thousand dollars or a hundred dollars of thirty thousand you you, yeah, you yeah, just but, you had a couple backers just now so you're uh, like yeah. uh 261 dollars away from thirty thousand okay so yeah new stretch goal soon yeah. uh you know as you get into the middle part of the campaign anyone will tell you you know you come out like this and it's like you know buck and bronco and you're like Woo, oh <laughs> and you know and then it kind of goes yes you know, like, yes and you're like oh my god i need to post and share and ask people to you know <laughs> help a brother out and so yeah. you know that's why podcasts and things like you guys do are so critical to say well, geez, I'd never heard of Monty more, or maybe I'd seen one cover. Hey, this is yeah. cool. You're introducing me a new product. Maybe I'll go check it out. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. We do have um, um, uh, a bunch of um, crowdfunding fans that uh, right so you support a lot of uh, campaigns, so that's yeah, pretty uh, cool. And then your I'm, name I'm alone. One of them. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just keep, I just keep pledging to Kickstarter. Yeah. Like, if, you, know if, you, if you look on my profile, it'll, it'll say that I've supported 74. Yeah. Dude, right? Yeah, so even yeah. before I came to Kickstarter, uh, I was already supporting other people. Like, wow, yes. that's really cool. Yes. And I used to have a small game company. We, we produced three or four games, and, and I'm not doing it now because it just – it wasn't doing what comics did and it's, it's very competitive and it's, it's very weird kind of insular, like game stores are different than comics. Right. And, um, uh, so I can remember when a buddy of mine said, Hey, we should put one of our games on Kickstarter. And it, because I didn't really know enough at the t- at the time I was kind of insulted and I was like, dude, we don't have to ask people for money. <laughs> like we can do this on our own. Like we'll figure it out. We'll take a loan out, you know? And, <laughs> It you know Kickstarter is the crowdfunding Next platform level. along with Indiegogo. Yes. Uh, I've lost money a few times on Indiegogo with people mm. who never delivered. Mm. Um, however, <laughs> there's still you know products that come out of there, yeah, and I still yeah. might do an Indiegogo campaign in the future. But at the moment, Kickstarter is the the platform where the comics community fans, especially indie sure. comics, yeah, know where to go and they can interact with creators like myself, Marat Michaels, Jesse Witchman, Ryan Kincaid yeah. on a daily basis, right? You can become friends because yeah. you're, you're, you're no longer removed. You can have this face to face. You can have yeah. chit chats. You can post funny pictures. Yes. Yeah. We, we've, uh, it's, you know what it is with Kickstarter too. It's just so easy. It's a, it's an easy place and have I like I have the app on my phone so like I'll scroll oh, yeah. I'm like oh I like that boom and just pledge yeah I'm kind I, of an addict I'm like what else yes. is out there you know <laughs> yeah so and, and even managing your pledge like right now like just managing my pledge like originally I had pledged right. this much I like that whole idea that you you know you're giving back to to mm-hmm. this. Uh, you know, so I, like, let me manage my pledge and change it. It's, so, it's done like this. Thank it's you. quick. Yeah, it's yeah. quick. So anybody who's watching, you know, definitely go on Kickstarter, download the app on your phone and just scroll through it. You're going to find a lot of dope stuff, including. And, and, and the oh, thing is, is we have people who can't take care of their pledge at the end. Maybe something happens in yes. between. So you can get in now. You can change it right up until the time where exactly. they're going to try to, you know, charge your credit card at the end. And somebody can say, well, I, you know, uh, I'm going to start out small, right? It's better to do that yeah. than say, oh, I'm going in for like the baller thousand dollar <laughs> level and then bail at the end because somebody yes. else can't get it. Right. right? Cause what if there's only That's three right. of those That's and right. then, you know, the, the comics producers like, oh, I just got dicked. <laughs> you know? So, cause it happens. Yes, yes, it, yes, does. it does. It does yes. happen. It does happen. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. But Monty, thank you so much for being on You're with welcome. us. We, we've been we've been talking to you. It's been great talking to you. Yes. Um, I definitely... this, this is one of the favorite, most favorite podcasts I've ever been on oh, because thanks. not only did you guys you ask very different and engaging questions, not only about the project, uh, but also my background and stuff. So yeah, uh, I really enjoyed this. I'd love to come back on in the future. Oh, because, oh uh, my, you, Mikasa Sukasa. It's on. It's on. Yeah. And, and, and I see you throwing the Spanish in there from time to time. I heard the Spanish. You know, you hung out with the Hernandez brothers. You know how it is. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> yeah, no, so we definitely would love to have you back. It's, it's been a blast. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on. And again, for everybody okay. watching, make sure you go to Kickstarter. Make sure you, uh, you know, just search blood and bullets and make sure after the end you put a little apostrophe. So it's blood and bullets. Oh, you don't have to search. Just hit the it. link in the summary and it'll take you oh, right there. Oh, there you go. Look at that. There you make go. it easy. Like, 
that. Yeah. Yes. And if I could come back in the future when we do Loco Hero number two, because she's a Latina, crazy Let's superhero. She it. thinks she's a superhero. She's not really, but she's kind of awesome. <laughs> That's Let's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. You're welcome back actually, anytime. I, I named her last name her first name and last name after people I know. So I have some friends uh, that are uh, Tony Martinez and his wife's Brina. So I gave his, her first name, Brina, and then Hernandez is her last name and story. And that was a tribute to my guys who helped me start me out in comics. Ah, That's awesome, man. You have such amazing stories. And I think, you know, whenever someone comes into the show, I'm more interested in you. Um, And, you know, we know what you create. But I think that the the, right. the the story is the the the, the, the creator, and uh, that's why I get fascinated, and we get fascinated by asking some of these stories because it provides an insight for those aspiring creators, um, mm-hmm. um, and as the, and they can see themselves, and they can relate, and they take away some really good practices. You know, it's like, oh, you know what? I've just experienced it. Well, you know, this is how he got to it. So maybe, maybe I'm overthinking or maybe, you know what I mean? So I think it provides those real life guidance tips for people. You need patience to make it in the industry. And we live in a time where it's a right short attention span theater. Okay. Everything's like, you got 10 seconds on Instagram, you know, capture people's (laughs) attention and TikTok. (laughs) you know, it's all this kind of stuff. And people don't want to hear that when people are like, dude, how did you get $30,000 on Kickstarter? And I say, you know, I've been in the industry for three decades. <laughs> right. So if you are in the industry for three decades and yeah. you do a good job and you have a good fan base, yeah. you could probably expect a similar return. That's right. That's- and they're like, yeah, I can't do that. I can't, I can't wait. Here. <laughs> I need that now. I don't know why my Kickstarter failed. Uh, and I'm like, mm-hmm. cause you don't have a fan base. It's not a knock against you. Right. You might be an amazing artist. It's just a fact. But you got to reach people. You got to be on shows like this. You got to do cons. I've done 400 conventions around the country. That's how many times I've sat in Artist Alley going, where is everybody? Yes. You know, going, I don't know if I'm going to make enough money to pay for the plane fare. Right. right. That, those were the early days. We all have those stories. Yes. Right. At least the guys back then. Now mm-hmm. people show up and they're like, oh, man, wow, this is cool. I went to my first con. I made like two grand. Yeah. I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you don't really like yeah. know how bad and hard it was. And, and I'm like the old guy going, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure we've been there man we've been there. we've been we when we went to san diego we always talk about this we we were cat we parked we we couldn't oh. even afford it like a hotel near the convention center oh yeah so God, we no. par- we you know, so we had one miles away we're walking around with our stuff you know carrying oh, our stuff to the thing it was crazy it was just yeah. but that's part of the fun like we look back at that now and we just laugh like holy cow oh yeah and we're the same thing we would have one hotel room and there would be eight, eight guys squatters right so there would be like you know two in each bed yes. four on the floor yes. and we're working for doing charity artwork and commissions and yep. he's like dude shut up you're snoring and he'd be like yeah well you're drawn turn off the light and it'd be like 3 a.m these are yeah. these are the comic-con stories you know that's it that's those are the it, best guys. stories those are the best these stories never, yeah. we'll, they'll never well, let's know paying your dues. Yes. Oh, yeah oh, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But so much fun, Monty. Thank you so much for coming Thank you. On, My man. pleasure, guys. And we're definitely going to have you back. So get ready because you'll be back. Yeah, yes. I appreciate it. Uh, let me know anytime I can uh, share your stuff out uh, on my social media as well. Yeah. We're all in this together. Absolutely. 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 Outstanding. That was beautiful, man. Thank you so much, Monty. Appreciate you, man. Yes. You bet. Thank yes. you, guys. Yeah, no, no. And this is going to air, I, I believe, the 22nd, right? right yeah, Sam? Uh, Thursday. Yeah. Yes. So okay. I, I'm going to edit yeah, just, it tomorrow and Thursday's going to be up and up and running. Yeah. Hit me with the link and then I can share it yes. out on all the pages Absolutely. and things like that. You and I just it. have to know, Jorge, are you in a closet? <laughs> Stop it. I'd be telling him to come out the closet. <laughs> that like, it looks like a closet door. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. Now, does everybody call you George? Yes, George. Yes. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. I, I played on a soccer team for a number of years. Did we, had you? A, we had a badass soccer player whose name was Jorge. Dude. And all the white guys who couldn't pronounce his name all called him George. And they were like, George, George. And I'm like, yeah, okay, okay Jorge. He's got it. And we're like, I, I can say his name. So I'm going to say his real name. <laughs> but you know, everybody else just like butchered it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. That's why I just say, go go with George. We'll just go with yeah, George. Yeah. But yeah, no, dude, thank you so much. You're hysterical, bro. You, you're killing me. You're killing me over here. Thank you guys. Thank you, We got to do this. And when everything, you know, when we can go out there and do things, we definitely have to hang out. You know, if we ever make it out to San Diego and you're there, we definitely got to stop by the table. Absolutely. That'd be great. We'll go have a drink. You got it. All right, cool. I'll come out of this closet. We'll get out there. (laughs) (laughs) Talk to you soon. 
I'll talk to you later, bud. See you guys. That was um, <laughs> my, Monty Moore. Michael Moore. Yeah, amazing. Oh my gosh! You know what's crazy? There, are, there are certain guests that when you have them on, you know that you can spend the you can spend hours because his stories are fascinating. And they, yeah. oh yeah. He, and the thing is, you know, for every, I guess, what do you call it, profession that he's played in, whether it's filmmaking, you know, game design, toys, toy design, whatever, mm-hmm. I had this unlimited amount of questions about the experience. What was yeah. it like the first time? You know, you know, what was some of the learnings? You know, all those things. And um, while I'm always... Um, impressed by the work that is being produced now, I'm more impressed by the creator and the journey. Because for me, the journey is like the sketchbook. It's yeah. the art of books. That's why I collect so many art of books because I want to know the process. So I'm more interested in his process, hit the experiences, those learnings, the life lessons, um, and his his uh, I mean his book, his autobiography is fantastic. Yeah, that's why I asked him about that whole, you know, the 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 you know the rejection letters and all that other stuff. Because oh, I get them every day. I still get them. <laughs> yeah, how do you like? How do you handle it? Because yeah. he he, you know, he, he got through it. Yeah, you know, despite and 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 how did he get through it? It was just, you know, growing growing that you know that set and saying, hey man, I'm gonna call this guy. I'm not gonna just wait around. I'm gonna call this guy. I don't normally do this. I'm gonna call him up and see what's going on. And and that jump started his career. Yeah. I mean to the point where he was working for some of the things that he loved as a kid, like Dungeons and Dragons, working for that. How, you know, he geeked out on that. He you know, like, what's oh, fu- thing. you know, it's funny. I mean, just about, I, I, I would say 80% of the people we run into all are fans of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The only time I ever got into Dungeons and Dragons is when, the, when the, the video game first came out um, and it looked like a cartoon. And, mm-hmm. um, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't Dungeons and Dragons. Dragon's Lair. That's what I was. That's what it was. But Dungeons oh, yeah, and Dragons, yeah, no, the I cartoon on Saturday morning picture. cartoons. I was yeah. a big fan of it. Uh, but uh, I wasn't a big gamer. Um, Me neither. Um, I'm still not. I'm I used to play PC games. I remember Paperboy back in the day. So I don't know if anybody yeah. when the Commodore 64. Like I'm really dating myself. And yeah. um, but I played like SWAT or like um, uh, I played Call of Duty back back in the days. I played um, um, Max Payne. Uh, yeah. Remember the video game? Yeah, I never got into video games at all. Like, yeah, I, I, I sucked at them. That's why. Like, I, like Super Mario Brothers came out, and I couldn't get past. I was like, you know what? I'm not playing this. This is stupid. Oh, I used and to so, like. I totally just gave up on. I used video to games. kill it with Spy Hunter. Mike Tyson's, Mike Tyson's Punch Out was my joint though. That and, and like Legend of Zelda. Like I like those uh, those uh, those games. I yeah, love Mario like Brothers, this. Nintendo. I, I I used to kill it. Um, uh, Spy Hunter, um, Donkey Kong. Pitfall, the old games. I used to rock them. Pitfall, I Pitfall, remember, Pitfall. remember that? Uh, the Star Wars games that came out on the Atari. Remember that? I mean, not the Atari. Yeah, yeah. I think they came out on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know if you remember Vectrex. No. Yeah. So you know, it's funny because a lot of the, the, the millennials or the the newer generation, when they hear some of the things, they're like, "What? Are you, what was that?" When when he said. Um, when he said there was no internet, I, the, the kids today don't understand what that is. Like, what do you mean no, there was no internet? There's no internet, right? That, that's exactly. hard to believe. You know what yeah. I mean? And, there's uh, always been internet. Yeah, so it, it, it's a uh, pretty. You know, it's funny. I knew back in the days when the rejection letters used to come in the mail. I used to know immediately it was a rejection letter because the size of the envelope, mm. right? Because it would be different. You know, the rejection letter was thin. It's usually a one page. Thank you, but no thank you. Um, and now in the emails, I know immediately when I when I see it, I'm like, oh, that's a rejection letter, and I just throw it into a rejection folder, and like from you know, and I'm like, oh, thank you for considering, and I'm like, oh, once it says thank you for the consider, I'm like, um, uh, but uh, it's funny, you know. But uh, again, I I look at it as part of the process. It's a matter of taste. Some people are gonna like it, some people are not. You just gotta find the right person and and keep it moving. Sometimes it's a matter of, you know, the, like he says, they get so many submissions that unless you stand out or unless you talk to them or unless you Hustle. do something out of the ordinary, it's just going to go into that back room where they're going to go in there in case they, yeah, we need a new idea. See if you can find anything in that in that room back there. So, you know, the, the, the phone call, the speaking to somebody, say, I never got it. Like, did you get my, my package? Never got it. 
oh, can you send it to me again? You know, because a lot of these things could be going into a spam folder. You don't know. Yes. They may never be getting in. And then that's why there, there are no responses. So, you know, don't give up. Not not just you, Sam, but just people out there. If you if you're in that process of, of, re- <laughs> of sending things in and you're not getting any responses, you know it, it's uh, just keep hustling. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna happen. Look, yeah. look, look at Monty. Look at Monty. He did it. I mean, he's killing it. He's killing it. He's killing it. He has 30 a big, G's. He has he's a gonna big make thirty G's. But before this airs, be, you know, it's today's the twentieth. Before this airs, that thing will be thirty G's. I, be, I guarantee it. I think he'll guarantee. be at thirty two. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The day it airs, that's yeah. my gut. Um, yeah. But. No, no, no. Fascinating interview. Fascinating guest. Um, we are welcome back anytime, Auntie. Um, uh, again, if you want to be a guest on uh, The Craze, all you have to do is hit us up. And we're on all social media platforms and just DM us at Catch The Craze. That's with a D-A, not with a T-H-E. And, um, you know, if you like this episode, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions for Monty, put them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to pledge to his Kickstarter, the link is right below. Just hit that uh, and go straight over there. Also, when you get a chance, check out Cast the Crazy's landing page. We go live April 29th. The link is below. Sign up. Our goal is 100 backers. We're not Monty, but we want 100 backers. So hit that link below. Support Cast the Crazy issue number three. If you didn't back issues one and two and didn't even hear of Cast the Crazy, here's your chance to get all three issues. Um, we have some variant covers. We have some really good incentives. Uh, it's going to be exciting. We'll go live We are going to be live April 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on all um, live streaming platforms. So join us. We'll have some raffles, some really big announcements. It's going to be fire, fuego. Yes, Um, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. Get on there. Get on there. Thumbs up, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Sam the Crazy Man Vera. I'm Gibbs the Dreamer Medina. And we are out.